the whole conservation law actually generalizes to multiple dimensions. So let's start with the conservative form of uh, conservation law in multiple dimensions. We have partial u, partial t, plus now we have multiple axes. We have x and y and z, for example. But no matter how big different dimension we have, we can write it as the divergence of a flux vector. Where the flux now is not a scalar, flux as it should be a vector in two or three dimensional space. And it's the divergence of that vector that, that determines the time evolution of that solution u. And of course the primitive form is taking chain rule on this second term. And taking chain rule, we get a df vector du, a scalar, dot with the gradient of u that is equal to zero and again this is a wave speed except for now my wave speed is a vector it not only denotes how fast locally the wave advects also it determines towards which direction does the wave propagate okay and we also have the integral form. The integral form again is derived by integrating over any domain, any continuous domain, this differential equation. So for example, in 3D space, this is going to be dV, d volume is equal to zero okay and first of all let's integrate the first term and move the differential to time out of the domain we have integral of ddt integral of u dv so again if u is density in three dimension this is the total mass encompassed in this volume omega the second term we can use directly uh, Fundamental theorem of calculus. Yeah, Gauss's theorem. So the integral over a volume of a divergence is equal to what? It's equal to a surface integral, exactly, over, let me denote partial omega as the surface encompassing the volume, dot a normal vector, ds, where this is a surface integral over the surface, is equal to zero. If you write it the other way, just to put a minus sign on the second term and move it towards the right-hand side, it is this. So we can see that. And, and for example, I think it's, it's easier to move the minus sign to here so that we have a minus n. So n, the normal in Gauss's theorem, is a unit normal pointing outwards or inwards? Outwards. outwards. So minus n is going to be a unit normal pointing inwards, right? That means the rate of change of the total mass inside the volume is equal to the flux, is equal to the total flux into the volume, right? Of course, the, the f can have the opposite sign, have, can point towards the different direction as, as minus n, the inside of the volume. In that case, f represents a flux out of the volume. If f is aligned, has a positive inner product with minus n, it represents a flux into the volume. All right, so this is how uh, the conservation law works in multiple dimensions. Any questions? So we will shelve this multi-dimension conservation law for later on when we discuss finite volume in, in multiple dimensions. This lecture will focus on only the one dimension scalar conservation law. And the purpose of this is to
for us to have an intuitive understanding of how the solution in 1D looks like and for us to derive our finite volume scheme. Okay. Question? Are the primitive and conservative equations saying something different? Can you explain? 